Used to play a football class. One time you're late. <laughs> <laughs> when you're ready. Okay. Okay, we're going to stand. Uh, we're going to do item number one, which is the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> The United, United States, States of America, America into the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two is roll call. The two me? Yeah. Yeah. Jake? Yeah. Ms. Yeah. Marlon? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Item number three is Public comments. Now, uh, we will we will have received public comments. We had three. We had yes. And now uh, we will review that and uh, discuss it with the committee. Uh, comments, please. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Just a comment about the public comments. Okay. Uh, I believe a few members of the school committee did receive a email. From the GNB EU leadership team. And in it, one of us it says, throughout this pandemic, allowing public comment that is not censored by the superintendent's office. And I did call Mr. O'Brien earlier because as soon as I saw that, he reacted to it as others would. And to my knowledge, Mr. O'Brien, you and I talked that any comment that has come in has always come before the board that you have not censored anything out of not coming to us. Is that correct or incorrect? Mr. Shade, uh, to that point in your packet today is a um, comment, public comment from a community member that is in your packet, much like every other public comment, whether it's via email or typed letter, it is filtered through by administrative assistant Maria Fredette Maria, if you can speak with your processes once you get any comp correspondence. If they are emailed to me, I immediately email it to the school committee members. I also make a copy of it for the packet for the meeting, and I also respond to the person who sends the email. All right, again, if I may have the floor, Mr. Durgan. Yes, um, go ahead. I want to clarify that, again, we do read it, and I know in the past, I think we got away from a little because it's been a pandemic year, which is different than any other year in history. Um, things like this that come through the school committee usually will go to the chair for a one person to make a comment rather than, you know, six, seven, or eight people. The other two things that are in here that I think may be incorrect, and I want to make sure that the public knows that, you know, we read it and we do address it. We are asking for the same transparent process that our sending districts afford their communities. I'm from Dartmouth. I know in Dartmouth that they do very similar to this. Uh, they, they, they get it in. I think you can come in a little closer to the time frame than we, I don't know, but I know that this is how they handle. So I don't think all sending districts are doing it live and in person. And also last part of it said that um, community is doing, opening up the school uh, school committee meeting to the public and by allowing public comment. Um, I believe we're still under kind of some restrictions that are by the state. I think the school here has done an excellent job in preparing it through the month, many different changes of the last six months. And I think eventually that's going to happen. But I think right now, it sounds like that, no, many other schools are doing this and how come we're not? I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not saying it is. It is or isn't, but I wanted the public to know that 
We want to get back to normal. We want that to happen. But I think we don't censor. We try to be as transparent as possible. And I think we are you know, going to see how that opens up down the road. Is, is that correct? Yes. In the previous, the previous public comment, uh, the subject matter pertaining to accrued sick time during maternity leave. That email and correspondence was sent to the school committee. It was also sent to my front office leadership team, along with our leader, leader, uh, legal team. And in our approach, working with the business manager, we addressed and accommodated the request. And that information came through the public comment venue. So to my knowledge, every comment, every concern, whether it's from a community member, staff member, or anyone representing the association team with the union, we've tried to address. Thank you. I, I just want to instead of we'll try to respond to it, I'd rather respond to here to people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. No further question on that. So I think the point that they were trying to make though is um in the very first paragraph, the statewide demands for schools to uh, fully reopen include more students in the face to face process. I think the question is, when are we going to do the same? Uh, and say I'm not a fan of Zoom, definitely not a fan of YouTube Live. Um, so what is our plan to open up to the public? Uh, I mean, we're, we're requiring the kids to come in and do face to face and the teachers, but we're still meeting kind of in a closed circuit here. That's, um, but it's closed circuit in life, Mr. Oliveira, much like the majority of school systems are doing. And by design, we've designed over the last year, the infrastructure, which is the facilities, the technologies, the sound barriers, the uh, sailing microphones, that I don't want to speak for the, the incoming superintendent. We have the ability in Shape Forum to unveil this, this uh, petition wall and we can open up for the general public. Uh, tomorrow, I have, an I don't want to say an emergency Zoom, but a sudden Zoom meeting with the commissioner where um, I emailed his uh, senior associate in preparation of this meeting to find what the agenda items will be tomorrow. And I, I think the Commission is going to unveil, unveil updated regulations to where he thinks schools should be in the future. And, and I'll speak with Mike and the leadership team. And at some point, we can open up forum to the general public if it's within the guidelines. I will call you personally if those guidelines are updated tomorrow. And that would be my goal is to see um, open. Uh, open back up to the public so we can uh, have some live questions. Um, the other thing is when we get the public comments, if I'm not mistaken, at the last meeting, um, there was some hesitation to not just place them on file. We were going to discuss comments as they came in. I don't think it makes much sense to take a comment and place it on file. Anybody else feels about that, but I think we should be discussing any of these that come in, not just sliding over. That's I think the flavor of the chair and vice chair. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, I don't disagree with you on that way, but I think your interpretation is basically, yeah, we are going to place it on file, but anybody that has a question on it would be would comment to the superintendent. Or but we're incoming superintendent. Re review it with them if there is an issue. I mean, I personally know if I receive one, I'm going to talk to them and find out what the story is. They can both tell you that I've, I've been to them numerous times there is issues. So I don't see where we're just placing it on file. It's just. Well, Mr. Oliver, to that place on file, the, the most recent concern, which was the accrued sick time with maternity leave. Um, that was discussed by the chair and vice chair. We sent it to the two principals, our business manager and our legal team. And um, 
Mike, if you'd want to speak. Yeah. So to Mr. Olivera's point, I, I have no philosophical opposition at all, but I think once the guidance Mr. O'Brien pointed out, we should absolutely be following all state guidance, open up our meetings uh, and that piece. I, I, I just want to say for the benefit of those people watching and for the committee, there should be nothing short of full transparency, which means that if someone has something to say, I like the process where the paperwork comes in so that we're prepared as well. Um, what I don't want to see is the school committee meetings turn up where there are surprise announcements and then questions and things along those lines. So if we want to develop a process uh, together collaboratively about people submitting what their questions are, presenting those questions in a timed fashion, that doesn't allow this committee's work to be sidetracked and the administration led by me addresses those questions, um, I'd be happy to do that, provided that we're all afforded the same opportunity to try to address those concerns in real time and not blindsided with questions that may come out of a public, an open public forum, so to speak. But I'm entirely open to having that conversation. I'll work with you or any of the school committee members to think about at what point in time we should uh, move forward as vaccinations ramp up um, about opening up the, the, the forum here. We should hold the meetings here. We've invested a lot of money into this, into this area. And so I actually think the YouTube piece is here to stay or whatever, because some folks are going to want to watch these meetings from home. Some are going to want to be in person. And if we're standing behind this idea of full transparency, then I, my, my opinion would be to make sure that we're fully transparent about the workings that are happening every day. There's no reason for us to, to put our head in the sand. We're doing what we say we're doing to you. Um, and I'm happy to address that with any member of the public at any time. No, and I echo that and just further, I just think public comment deserves public answer. Absolutely. Um, you know, for us to make some calls and discuss it with the administration, well, that gives us the answers, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really air in the public. You know, if it's a public question, we should give the answer back to the public. I think Absolutely. so. I just, I kind of frown on taking these and just filing them. So that's just my take on it. But I would like to see some kind of a procedure that when these come in, um, you know, maybe they handled in a little bit different way um, as far as public comment goes. I'll work on something and we can present it to the school committee at the next month's meeting. Fair to, to further advance that, the only negative comment I can remember was the one about the students eating lunch in the uh, shops, and we addressed that at the public meeting and changed that. But the others were, were more or less attaboys. We, first of all, we had very few public comments. Every time I asked Maria at a meeting, have there public comments? No, none today. So I announced that we have had no public comments this month. So they're not coming through the way they're supposed to come through to Maria's office if they're negative, because everything else has been doing a good job, guys. Uh, like this one we just got from. Uh, so that was a positive. So what, there's nothing really for us to act on. Mr. Chief, may I, may I ask you a question respectfully, Mr. Oliver? Do you consider a rogue email to the school committee, not through the public comment section of public comment? So an email that you might get from person A, B, C, or D that I'm not aware of would not be considered a public comment. It should go through the, the, the regular process. Okay, so a public comment to you would be something that is funneled through the central office to the administrative assistant to the superintendent. Yes. For example, example number three here, the, the letter from- uh, Ms. Ms. Brum. Ms. Brum. Yeah. Okay. As an example, this is the procedure it should take. But to take this letter, not discuss it, place it on file, makes no sense. We can absolutely develop a procedure and have that ready for the May for the May meeting. Right. Is, is there any more question on on that section? We you all set with that. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Hearing none, we're going to go on to item number four, which is the reading of the notice of the meeting. Yes. I'm sorry, I should have been asked to. <laughs> okay, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. The following meeting of the Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School District School Committee will be conducted via remote participation. We will post an audio recording, audio video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record 
these proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting on the school's website and local cable access. Okay, the next item will be number five. Okay, that's the next item will be on number six. What will be the um, reading and acceptance of the of the minutes of the March 9th meeting? To approve. Second. Discussion on the on the uh, motion on the second. Uh, hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Oh, so moved. Uh, we need a separate motion for the um, executive session. Second. Okay, it's been motion and second. Any questions on that? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Okay, item number seven, which is new business. Okay, A is um six please. Six, we did six. I thought I just did six. We did five. Six is item six B. Hold on a sec. Put that down as new business. Okay. All right. Approval of the bills. Six. I think it's a foul. Motion to approve as a second. Any questions? Excited price. Totally out of place here. All those in favor of paying the bills, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Are none opposed? The bill will be paid. Okay, I am. I didn't go down far enough. I'm sorry, people. Okay, item B, the six, is... The auditor's report, I'm sorry, the auditor's report from uh, Aiken Associates. Do we have someone here? Okay, I'm sorry. Garcia representing Hagen Sahadi. Okay, Mr. Lima, you've got the floor. All right, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Andrew Lima. I was the uh, manager on your fiscal year 2020 audit. Um, you should have two reports that were issued, one being the annual financial statement and the other is a single audit report. And I'll take you through those two reports uh, briefly tonight. Um, as far as the audit preparation, the business audits were, um, were prepared in a very different year. We performed most of the audit remotely. Um, documents were able to be uploaded to a secure portal for us to review. Um, we did come on site a little bit, but uh, not as much as in prior years. With that said, um, our audit reports, both for the financial statement and single audit, were both clean. There were no material findings that we noted. And we believe that the financial statement that you're looking at is um, in line with US GAAP and the governmental account exchange report. Um, as far as technical changes to the audit report this year, there were no new audit standards this year as a result of COVID 19. Um, everything was delayed at least one year. Um, page one and two, you'll see our audit uh, opinion letter. On the bottom of page one, our, again, our opinion is clean with respect to the financials. Um, page three, financial highlights. Your general revenues, I'm only going to hit a couple of bullet points on this page here. Uh, general revenues in fiscal of the prior year about 1.5 million and that's as a result of the uh, increased chapter 70 and chapter 71 school aid. Uh, your general fund, you had a profit of 432,000 uh, in 2020. Uh, and you can see in that same bullet point, we note the uh, state aid and town assessments of 36.8 million and the 4.5 million uh, town assessment. Um, 
Going ahead to page 10, budgetary highlights. Again, your general fund. Um, you were, had presented a balanced budget utilizing 400,000 from excess and deficiency and um, ended up having a positive turn back of 652,000 before the utilization of that 400. Um, actual revenues were 462,000 more than expected. Um, and again, that's your uh, chapter 71 um, being higher than budgeted. Uh, actual expenditures were less than expected for 2020. Um, I, I believe that the COVID-19 shutdowns probably had a, a large factor to that positive figure. Uh, uh, page 17, we look to the uh, income statement for the general fund and my major funds. Um, again, you can see the 432,000 profit for the general fund. Um, and also you had uh, your non-major governmental funds are primarily your um, revolving funds and grants. Those also had a slight profit at 172,000. Uh, as required by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, um, the financial statement presents not only a short-term focused financial statement, which is your, your page 17, your governmental funds, but also the full accrual basis, which takes into account your capital assets, your long-term debt, your pension liability, your OPEB. Page 18 shows you a reconciliation between the two. So um, primarily the difference, um, if you look at the most material items here, it's gonna be your capital assets, net depreciation. So you had depreciation in excess of new assets this year, 1.2 million. And also your change in the OPEB expense um, and that change was 7 million this year. Um, that OPEB expense we'll get into in a minute. That's calculated by an independent actuary. Um, page 44, which is the budget to actual report. Again, you had um, favorable revenues of 462,000 um, and predominantly from the chapter 71 the other revenue items that are typically unbudgeted, that's historically the way that it's been uh, presented. And also on your expenditure side, you have the $189,000 favorable variance. And again, the, the level of control for the budget for the um, school department is at the total level, as most of you are well aware. Um, page 47, your pension liability, part of the New Bedford pension system. And based on the Gosby standards, you're required to take uh, your proportionate share and book it to your financial statement. Your proportionate share for 2020 um, is 4.75%. And based on um, actuarial estimates, your, your portion of the liability actually dropped from about 20.1 million to 17.9. Um, if you think back to uh, December 31, 2018, um, a lot of the investment balances had gone down quite a bit, and they did recover by uh, 123119. So that swing is largely due to the assets just coming back. Um, it's a timing, it's it's due to timing. It's it's based on the value at December 31 each year. Um, page 53. 53 will show you a summary of your liability. Um, we're building out to 10 years on this schedule, and then it will continue to remain at 10 years uh, as we've worked our way there. Um, and based on the actuarial estimates, you an increase to the liability of 3.5 million. Um, you do have an OPEB trust, and it is being funded, even though it's being funded slowly. Um, that leaves you with a funded status of 0.33%. Um, it's not uncommon to see uh, unfunded plans, particularly in school departments at this point in time. Obviously, if the cash flow isn't there, it's it's difficult to keep up with the funding. Um, if you're curious to see what would make you fully funded for fiscal 20, on page 54, you've got the actuarially determined contribution of 7.9 million, and your contributions, which are your actual payments against 
um, healthcare liability for that current year with 2.3, you would have to fund 5.6 million in cash to be fully funded for that year. So you can see how difficult that would that would become. Um, second report we have. Does anyone have any questions on the financial statement before? Um, the second report we have is the single audit report. A single audit report is required any time um, an entity were to expend about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in federal expense. It contains two letters. Um, the first letter is the report required by governmental auditing standards with respect to financial reporting. This letter had no material weaknesses. Um, there were no compliance issues that were noted that were material, anything to that effect. Uh, the second report that you'll see on page three, single audit packet report, is um, called guidance report. And this is specific just to the federal programs. Uh, we're required to essentially line up all the federal programs and um, assess based on risk. And there is a bit of math that is set by the federal government. Um, what programs become what's known as major and those programs do rotate every three years. Um, programs you'll see that were major this year are outlined on page five. Uh, and they were school lunch and Perkins. Their total federal expense for 2020 was 2.18 million. Prior in, in the immediate prior year, so fiscal 19, it was 2.4 million. The decrease is almost entirely to the school lunch uh, and breakfast program, which, as you might imagine, being schools were closed in mid March, um, there was less activity there. Uh, with that said, page eight, you've got a summary of the audit results and uh, so the testing. There were no findings at the top. You can see the financial statement audit. Uh, no findings there and no findings to the federal award. That's all I've got. If you have any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Lima's report? Yes, comment. Yeah. No, no real question. I'd just like to thank you for a very comprehensive big audit. And I'd like to thank the business office for doing the work that they do and keeping it right. No findings is an excellent thing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Okay, hearing none, can I get a motion to uh, receive and place on file Mr. Lee's report? Second. Okay, move and second. No questions. If anybody wants to add that. So all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Hearing none opposed, Mr. Lima, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, going on to item C, which is uh, parent communication handled by Watson. Thank you, Mr. Durgan. Uh, in your packets, uh, you'll see the most recent survey results for the POSIP surveys. Again, those are sent out every other week on Fridays for feedback from parents and also included in the packets are the uh, three to four most recent, four most recent uh, principal's letters, which go out every Tuesday. Uh, we did hold this Tuesday's principal's letter, just so the committee is aware. Pending the conversation that Mr. O'Brien and others will be on tomorrow uh, from the commissioner. Uh, he called a late conference on Monday, and so that letter has been held until either late in the day tomorrow or on Thursday, based upon whatever guidance we, we get uh, from his office. Uh, I'd like to also just mention uh, Ms. McCann in the main office, who is taking a leadership role on the principal's letter. She is the one that reaches out to administrators, uh, puts this together for us on a regular basis, and so. I'm deeply appreciative of her efforts. Um, as many of us are juggling lots of things today, she has taken the uh, the leadership role on that and pieces this together. You'll notice the format I think is very professionally done, uh, well done, and uh, I look forward to seeing that work before Bob and I are able to sign off on what she does. So um, just kudos to her and her efforts. Any questions for what Mr. Watson just told us? Comments. There are none. Can I hear a motion to receive a place on file the parents' uh, communication report? So moved. And advise. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Hearing none opposed, we're going to go on to item D, is attendance. That will be handled by the superintendent. On that report, I don't know if the school committee members have a question. I got some questions for you, Ms. O'Brien, if I may. I don't remember in any, any school committee meeting or any, any notice we go. We haven't gone to a four day school week, have we? No, we haven't, sir. Okay. Because I noticed that Monday through Thursday, I don't think our attendance is great, but on Friday, it spikes greatly. If you look at the statistics, I happen to just total up all the days in the report. Monday through Thursday, we averaged 36 out, and on every Friday, we averaged 53 out. And, uh, I mean, I'm no Dr. Fauci, as you all know, Ms. O'Brien, but I don't know of any disease known to man that spikes only on Fridays. It seems odd to me that we're having this significant increase in lack of attendance on Fridays only. A question for you is, have we ever had to close the school on a Friday? Have we ever been close to closing the school on a Friday because of the lack of teacher attendance? Um, respectfully, there's been three Fridays. Um, I was a phone. I was five minutes away of calling the chairperson to close the building because we didn't have uh, our substitute teachers. We were pretty close. And that was the day that we had 62 people out on our Friday. The other time was when we had 59, and the other day was 57. Um, it, in Bedford, Vogue Tech is not a, the only school immune to this. There's other school systems that are dealing with this across the board. I've tried to, with building relationships, community, I've worked hand in hand with uh, Cheryl Bath Bartlett, who is the director of the New Bedford Health Center, and uh, she uh, text messaged me directly. When the opportunity occurred, we surveyed the staff. From that survey, we opened up opportunities for our staff and faculty to use that venue for vaccination site. We've been working with Department of Public Health where we forecast in the future that this will become a vaccination site also. Um, in my MAVA and Old Colony Superintendent Association uh, Q&As, uh, quite frankly, I'm very frustrated with regards to, I need to look myself in the mirror as the superintendent that the best instruction for our kids is it really going on, especially on a day with numbers like we've seen on Friday. I don't know if the principal will have a comment on that. Um, Fridays pre-COVID, uh, I'm sure attendance has been a little high, but uh, I don't know if you. Well, I, so, Mr. O'Brien, had mentioned this to me earlier today, uh, Attorney Walsh, and um, so I'm willing to take a look at the, the, the good news of going to the frontline system for monitoring attendance. We have four years worth. Uh, of data and information. So I'm willing to go take a look at that and report back to the committee in May on whether or not we've seen an increase in absenteeism on any particular day or any particular month this year relative to what's happened over the past. Um, I don't know that answer today, but I think that might be, uh, it sounds to me like that might be information that the committee is, is looking to, to get. And so I'm willing to have uh, folks in the business office and myself coordinate on some kind of response to, to present to you in May. So early on, it's early on, well over a year and a half ago now, or a year and three months. Um, the world, this small community of our school, everyone was anxious. Everyone was nervous. Everyone was concerned. But I think through all our surveys and communications and our administrative meetings and Zebra Ruder and the facility team and the overall blessing from the I'm going to public health director Chapman. I still believe. Oh, yet I know this institution is as safe as any institution in southeastern Mass or the state of Massachusetts. And Zeb and his team has provided all the PPE, the plexiglass, and so forth. Um, statistically, the, the 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 number 62 was the alarming day for me, and I asked. Um, our business manager to unpeel the onion. I said, I want to know from those 62 how many were from close cl close quarantine, close contact with our students, and the number's four. 
where we all want to be transparent. Cool. We hope between now and the end of June that we can work on and assure the safety to the students and staff. Because my prediction as the result of the commissioner's Zoom, um, and Pam was on a long webinar today, more students are coming back to Grade New Bedford Vogue Tech, and more students are going to come back to the area school system. I think it's, it's going to be concerning to parents. If, if, say you got a student that's trying to get ready for college, or someone's getting ready to take their SATs, or someone's getting ready for advanced placement, whatever it is, to know that, uh, that, that we're getting 58, 53, 55, 59, 62 substitute teachers on a Friday. These are the kids. Well, there's one vocational school locally, not far from here. They shut down on a Friday. That superintendent had the conviction to add an additional school day at the end of June. He just didn't consider it a snow day. He added, he added another day. And we're going to report back those numbers from Pam and ASOP and Mr. Watson. And hopefully, hopefully we can, we can get better. Thank you. Chair. Yes, go ahead. just to continue on that same vein, uh, I noticed that if you look at the Fridays, there's a large increase in certain groups. And then if you go back to the Thursday, numbers are, are less than half. And the same thing when you go back to Monday. And people can be involved in COVID or COVID related activities, and, you know, that are out on just on Friday. And then Thursday, they're doing good, and come back to school on Monday. And it seems strange that. Writings seem to be a high number of absenteeism. Anyone else want to comment on that? Hearing no other comments, uh, can I get a motion to accept item 60 attendance? Mm -hmm. Open's been made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Hearing none opposed. So moved to section 6E, which is the artisan's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again. Thank you. Um, most recently, I think last Friday, and then I received an official email um, from the commissioner and his um, leadership team with regarding the admissions process and uh, possible proposals for a lottery. Um, they've put together uh, an open 90 day period public comment where uh, missions will be looked at for all vocational schools. Some recommendations to some of the regulatory changes, whether it be uh, what we think more access to the middle schools and adjustments to some of the category areas and admissions. Um, our leadership team will be evaluating the proposals from the commissioner. And as we move forward as an institution, we will continually report back to this committee when this admissions policy uh, or recommendations are, are more structured and solid. With regards to admissions for this year's freshman class, we have um, presently sent out 200 and we just have roughly just a touch under a thousand applicants for the freshman class for the next school year. It's down some from last year and so forth. And we believe that the, the middle school kids, quite frankly, uh, working from home remotely have had a little bit of disconnect from the middle schools. But we have sent out uh, 220 acceptance letters most recently and another 250 acceptance letters will be mailed out on April 27th. So I don't know if that's uh, concerned. Any comments on other questions? All right, moving on with the Artisan Report. It was um, welcoming last week in the nice weather to um, watch with our uh, athletic director, uh, two soccer teams uh, playing a, a live game along with volleyball and uh, or, while a track meet was going on. And uh, it was a breath of fresh air for not only me, but Ryan, students, students trying to get a little bit no, more normal. The future timeline of more in-person learning will red flag us of concerns 
with regards to quarantine, but we're going to be working with our uh, leadership team and our uh, lead nurse, Ursula Crowell, and Heather, Heather Larkin with that. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, we hope to be a future site working with the Department of Public Health or the Mike Shea Student Forum, along with the outside area and the back part of the cafeteria. This will be a live vaccination health center site for the Department of Public Health for the community. It'll be totally locked down for the rest of the summer school team, and they'll have access uh, to the building and the restroom facilities. Yeah, we'll work in conjunction with Zebarudis. Uh, this time, if one of the principals, Mr. Watt, would like to take over. Yeah. Hey, in this month's awesome report, Mr. Shepard continued his theme with Women in History Month. He showcased all the important contributions women have made to Academy C trade, trade areas. To showcase a few of these examples, in automotive, Catherine Bluget, the first woman physicist chemist to work at General Electric, discovered a way to create invisible glass surfaces, what we know today as non reflective windows. She's also credited with developing poison gas absorbents, a method of de icing aircraft wings, which was instrumental during World War II. Businesses office tech, Mary Kay Ash, paved the way for women to succeed in business when she founded Mary Kay Cosmetics. She is known for her generosity, pink Cadillacs, and philosophy, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can, you're right. Cosmetology, Sherry Doss, transformed the world of beauty through education. She began at 19 years old and is now Vice President of Redkin Education Worldwide. She promotes the motto, if they learn better, they will earn better, and ultimately live the best. Information Tech, Marion Probe, was inducted into the Women in Technology Hall of Fame. She has over 135 pit patents and another 100 under review. She is a Senior Vice President for AT&T and sits on the board for Holocaust, Genocide, and Human Rights Education Center. Now, more to our students, our HVAC students have transformed old fire hoses into hose figures that will be used by the legal protective students as part of their rescue training. Additionally, the HVAC students designed and built an exhaust system, which will allow our Marine Service students to work on and test motors in our water tank. Top three seniors are utilizing the CNC machine to fabricate custom built walls for our new school store, the Den. The offsite construction completed phase two of the Artisan Imprint Medallion installation. Students installed the medallions at the Golf Hill Bucket, the Dartmouth Range, the Andre McCoy Center. Superintendent O'Brien and I were fortunate enough to see two medallions placed at the New Bedford MDI. Students were very excited to participate in this event. Academy A showcased the environmental engineering students who are completing their pass walker training. We could develop this course, tech workers at hazardous sites provide them with protective measures to ensure their health and safety. Co-op has over 100 students working in their trade areas and more waiting to begin their new co-op positions. The students who are not affiliated with co-op and under 18 must get a work permit. They can find this on our website by selecting the educational tab and going to the co-op and placement webpage. This is all very, I know that you know the fire hoses are very heavy, and when they put those together, they're pretty interesting for them to focus. They need the mannequins out of it. Yeah, yeah, they did. Oh, so you know, yeah, you know that it is. I tried one, they're pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah. In academics, we uh, highlighted science this week and just uh, this month. Just wanted to um, commend uh, Mr. Atkinson to the biotech program, which is our pop elective offering for seniors, uh, Mrs. Wallace, Mr. Duar. Joy Southworth was our teaching assistant. They've worked collaboratively on a grant that we've applied for uh, to purchase new state-of-the-art equipment for the course. Um, we have won that uh, grant in the past. I think the last time was uh, 2013 or 2011, 12, somewhere in that area. Um, and uh, we are hoping to win it again this year so that we can purchase additional supplies to service students who will have that course next year. Any 
questions for anyone that just spoke? Hearing none, can I get a motion to accept in place on file with Chris and Ryan? Oh. Made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none opposed. So moved. We're going to go on to item 6F, which is the student uh, representative report. Ethan Mori. So, uh, student council, along with uh, Schools USA uh, officer, uh, has finally set a date, uh, April 22nd, which is a Thursday. Uh, we will be sending several kids uh, to go to St. Mary's Church. To help organize the food drive and send out food today. Um, last week, as you can see over in that corner, uh, we handed out uh, senior signs, uh, and many seniors have been happy with them. They have posted them in their yard or in the front door, uh, and it's just a really cool camaraderie to see among the seniors and among within the school. Um, Thursday. April 14th and 15th, uh, there are two spirit days uh, and the theme are superhero days. Uh, so for students in the school, uh, dress up and check with the shop teacher to make sure there's no safety concerns. Uh, and then for anybody that's online, you can stick with the virtual backgrounds and then costume if you so choose. And that's just a nice, fun way to make this month a little bit better. Um, on April 11th, uh, students from Schools USA uh, started competing in the state competition, um, and when we are hoping for several good results for them to compete in nationals. Um, does anyone have any questions for Ethan on his report? Mr. Coleman, Mr. Chair, yes. uh, before I'm senior, I did see one in the yard when I was driving by yesterday. Uh, and it popped right up. I mean, the artwork or whatever it is is really, really pretty cool. Uh, so it's just awesome. Job. Questions or comments? Hearing none, can I get a motion to accept and place on file Nathan's student uh, report? Motion to accept the report. Second. Okay, we're gonna have a motion and a second. Any? Uh, no questions. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? So moved. Okay, we're going to go on to item seven is new business, and we're going to go to item A, which is the vote to approve two new positions. Mr. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Durgan. Uh, members of the committee, I have before you tonight two uh, job descriptions that were sent in your packet for your consideration. Um, I think. These are pivotal positions for the future of Greater New Bedford Vote Tech. And I'm just a minute today to kind of outline my thinking before answering any questions um, that you folks may have. Uh, the challenges that face schools and school organizations today are vast, real. Uh, it's important that our future, which includes the work before labor unions, has a process in place that manages consistency and collaboration with all district employees so that we are following both your guidelines established by the district and Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed expectations. Human resources traditionally has been a function where we manage administrative tasks like sick days, personal days, vacation days for full year staff. But this role has transformed in the last decade. It includes more processes that involve the hiring and retraining of employees, talent development, designing systems like an evaluation that best describe and address the needs of an organization that includes building consistency into our culture. The director will help focus employee management through our core values by providing support to the superintendent and the leadership team, both recruitment and hiring processes, he or she will help to build a more cohesive and consistent process that will manage labor law compliance, address employee complaints and disciplinary situations, coordinate schools evaluation systems, oversee the placement of postings, coordinate advertisements and interview committee, and will fundamentally play a central role on the superintendent's leadership team that will be parallel to a developing and changing organizational structure. I cannot stress enough how much I believe that 
This position is necessary to the future of Greater New Bedford Folk Tech, ensuring that we work collaboratively with our labor organizations and providing a consistent message across the school. Final point I would make is a promise I've made to several of you individually. Uh, I am fully aware of the labor union issues that, that are, are in front of the school district. No new positions that will be presented to this school committee will require any additional funding that was not already earmarked for staffing purposes. I want to be very clear about that with people who are watching. This position approved and posted and filled will be funded through funds that were not allocated due to retirements that took place in this district over the last 12 months. Working with Superintendent O'Brien, members of the leadership team, and Mrs. Stewart in the business office, we have been very careful. Think, when someone hands our retirement papers in, is this a position that we need to backfill? Or can we reallocate resources to better address the changing needs of Greater New Bedford Vote Tech? I am pledging to you tonight with this position that any, any positions funded through Chapter 70 this moment will be done through resource reallocation and not through new monies that could be directed towards any and all concerns that employees have or anyone else has towards towards the district operations. And I want to make sure that's very clear uh, with this position today. Thank you. Okay. Um, can we start with a motion to vote to approve new positions? Move. Seconded by. Now, any questions on the two new positions? Chair? Yes. Go, Mr. Shea. Um, I had the opportunity, and as Mr. Watson has reached out to all of us because it's new and give us information. I think, you know, I'm still involved now with an area school, you know, as a mentor, and, I, and the times have changed. And I think the biggest thing I see out of this, Mr. Watson, and maybe not the biggest in your plate, but on, there's so much that we are paying top dollar for, for lawyers, with top dollar for consultants, top dollar. And I think the right person in this position is going to bring all that together into a situation that is kind of in-house formed. I, 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 I support it because we are in a legal world right now on anything we do, and the lawyers love it. I think right now this could be very important for this school to go forward, and hopefully we're going to see on the other end are uh, the money that you use for the lawyers are going to dwindle down to get some of that you have in the building working on everyday situations. So, my two cents. Appreciate that, Mr. Shea. Anyone else have anything? Nothing. All those in favor of the vote to establish the positions, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? So moved. Okay, we're going to go to item 7B, which is the first reading of the FY22 budget. Um, the chairman of the budget subcommittee isn't here tonight, but anyone in the budget subcommittee would like to speak on that is welcome. Make a motion that we approve. Move okay, forward. Okay, we have a motion to approve the FY22 budget. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any questions on the budget? I have one question. Let's go ahead, please. Looking at the budget that came forward, I noticed that in the governor's proposed budget for next year, that their time at Haven and Bedford all have gone up in cost for them to support the school. I'm speaking for Dartmouth right now. I know Cindy and I have had this conversation in the past. Very conscientious about Dartmouth again, looking at where our finances are. I believe, from what I understand, that even though their cost has gone up, we are still at a minimum net school spending, that we are not increasing the cost of a town to benefit the positions that were put in skill. And I refer to me for uh, Mr. Stewart that, is that correct? Yes, you are correct, that the increases to the three community assessments are in connection with the Chapter 70 Foundation Enrollment formula that they have revised starting with fiscal 19 and fiscal 20 that now it is true to what the community's property value uh, economic standpoint all of those have been reevaluated 
so that when they do the actual formula per assessment for the minimum contribution, it is based on the community. Uh, and that is why some of them have increased because of that formula change. Uh, the enrollment numbers were sent to the communities on October 1st through our scheduling specialist, Mr. Mars. She sends them the numbers and the three communities verify that yes, those are our students that are at New Bedford Vote Tech. And we have sent those numbers with these assessments to show that these are the enrollment numbers that were from October 1 that were reported. That is what drives this formula for the assessments. So again, just a clarification for those that are listening is that the formula has changed. And see Mr. Watson earlier, I think he used the word 95% of people don't understand it. I corrected him, I think 99% of the people don't understand that formula as a former superintendent. I had a very good business manager that was there to do that. So for the people like listening, it is minimum net school spending. It's a new formula that's out there, and we're still under that umbrella. So I thank you very much, but it's important that the Bedford, Dartmouth, and for Haven are all aware that that's what we're accepting. Thank you. And just to let you know that the three communities were given these assessment estimates. The first week of February after I received the governor's proposal. So they were all aware of these increases in the first week of February 2021. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Are there any other questions or statements that anyone wants to make according to uh, the budget? Hearing none, can I get a vote to accept the first reading of the FY22 budget? Motion. All those in favor of the uh, motion, please signify by saying aye. Thank Are there any opposed? Are none opposed? So moved. Okay, next. Go ahead, far enough. Okay, vote to approve the 2021 uh, 22 school calendar. So moved. Second. Questions on that? Hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the school calendar for the next year, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none opposed. Item D. First reading adoption 2021 to student handbook. Make a motion we approve <coughs> first reading. Can you get a second on the motion? Second. Okay, are there any questions on the student handbook? Sir, again, I'd like to just take a moment. Let's go ahead and ask any questions. Um, Kayla Shea is here. She's one of our math instructors. She's also um, in the program, principal's licensure, and uh, I've had the privilege of working with her. So she's doing some internship hours. She has helped spearhead uh, this project for us, uh, working in conjunction with Mr. Watt, Mrs. McCann in the main office. Um, so I, I wanted to take a moment just to um, acknowledge, I don't know if there are any questions from the committee and Michaela is prepared to be able to address uh, those questions. Uh, um, but I just want to take a few minutes to kind of thank her publicly for work. I know that she's uh, pursuing additional certifications uh, and really positive things that are exciting for her and her career, I hope. Uh, but at the same time, I just wanted to, to take a moment to recognize her in a public format for her efforts on behalf of the school district. Uh, in preparing the student handbook. I don't know if Michaela wants to, to say anything to the committee. Well, <laughs> go ahead, this is your moment. Uh, no, I just didn't know if there were any questions and I'm just looking forward to him uh, bringing this into this century. Um, <laughs> it's more uniform, it's going to be digitally interactive, it'll be available on the website, much more user-friendly that way. Thank you, so, thank you, Michaela. Any questions to? Just comment that again. I'm glad you're going for your for your principal like this. I think it's great to see young people coming up into those roles. So, uh, good luck with it. I'm quite happy in the classroom here. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? No. Um, get a vote. Motion. Okay. All those in favor of accepting the student handbook for next year, please signify by saying aye. Right. Any opposed? Any opposed? So moved. Any 
Uh, okay, the next one is uh, to establish uh, activity account for the class of 2024. Get a motion to do that. Motion to approve. Second. Any questions on that? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none opposed, so moved. Okay, now we're down to page. Oh, that was it. Item F, we have to um, update on the principal's position. That would be Mr. Watson, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Durgan. Uh, just again, in the interest of transparency, the uh, principal search committee began its work last Thursday. Uh, there were 12 applicants for the position. The team met uh, both Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. Are preparing for the first of six selected candidate interviews tomorrow um, and Thursday. They worked hard to uh, develop the process and characteristics of what we're looking for in a school principal. They've developed an interview questions. Uh, they are prepared to, to begin that work tomorrow. Uh, the team is comprised of administrators, academics, and CBTE, academic and CBTE teachers as well as a parent representative. It is evenly balanced amongst all parts of our school so that we can make sure that all voices are represented on the team. I look forward to um, learning from them towards the end of this week, I hope, who their recommended uh, five, three or four finalists may be, um, and then we'll begin that work. I'll begin that work having those conversations with those individuals, um, if not next week, the week after. Uh, we are still on target for an appointment early May. Any questions on that? Hearing none, we're going to go on to item G, 7G, which is to establish the meeting date for the second reading of the FY22 budget. I get a motion for the 27th of April. Mm -hmm. How about a second? Second, second on the question. Okay, we have a motion and a second now on the question. What time are you looking for an evening? I, the 27th, uh, I have something on that night. I don't know if the 26th. Does anyone have an alternate idea? What the 26th, can can we all make, make the 26th, which is the Monday night? For me personally, Monday night's better. Okay. Is there anyone here who can't make the 26th? Let's put it that way. Did you know? She'll be dead. Uh, she's supposed to be that. Okay, then let's do that. Let's let's establish the 26th, since we seem to all be able to make that. Can I get a motion to accept the the April 26th Monday night meeting for 6:30? I'd like to amend the motion for the 27th, change it to the 26th. Okay, the second is okay. I'll second any amendment. Okay, any questions on that? Shouldn't be any. But uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. There any that uh, can't do that? I'm done. So, so moved. Six o'clock. I think my machine just shut off again. Seven. That's six, six thirty, I believe. That's usually when we meet. Is any, anybody have a problem at six thirty? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair. Just bear with me for a second, please. My machine keeps shutting down here. Let's see. Um, the... Okay. Report on. Item number eight is report on personnel appointments, resignations, or retirements. Motion received, placed on file. Okay. It's been made, made in a second. Are there any questions? No questions. Uh, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any opposed? So moved. Item nine, trying to get to. Item 
Item nine is informational. We have two items there, which is the junior achievement award. Does anyone? I don't have any questions about that. Okay, seconded by. Second. Okay, yeah, there are uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. They are unopposed. Any unopposed? So moved. M9. It's, uh, communications. Communications? Okay, item 10 is uh, committee discussion. Any committee discussion? None? Uh, let's go to item 11. Is uh, any other business to come before the committee? No other business to come before the committee. We go to item 12, which is the executive session under uh, chapter 30, section 21. We will be discussing the uh, negotiations with the union and we'll also be discussing financial implications uh, for the board. I'll be coming back to what uh, open the roll call. Yes. 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 Yes.